Hey guys, it's Carrie Ann with Eggers and Bacon Family Farm. Um, today I'm going to show you our favorite yogurt recipe using our trusty Instapot. Um, we have ended up with a lot of milk this last week um, with GoGo being on a milk test. Um, we're really excited about that. Our last milk test at day 165 showed her to have 9% butter fat. Um, she should get her milk stars um, come January. So we're happy about that. Um, so for our yogurt, um, the first things that you need is about eight pounds of fresh goat's milk. Um, I love our goat's milk. You can start to see the fat separating on the top. Sometimes I'll scoop that out and save the fat in the freezer so that we can make butter. I'm not gonna do that today. You also will need some plain Greek yogurt. Um, I use this and use about four heaping tablespoons of this um, for our yogurt culture. Um, you also will need gelatin. Goat milk doesn't really set as well as I would like for my texture and Mark's texture preference. So we use about three and a half packages of gelatin. Um, some ice, um, we do that in the Instapot to get, prevent the milk from sticking. Um, and then your basic tools. So um, our trusty stirring ladle. Um, I use this for all of our cheeses, I love this thing. Um, a tablespoon, um, a whisk, and then my instant read thermometer. I use this a lot during our process with um, the yogurt, making sure that we're getting everything to the right temperature. And then my trusty kitchen scale. So to start off, you're going to take your ice and stick it in the Instapot and kind of swirl it around a little bit. And that just prevents the milk from sticking to the bottom. I then will stick it on my trusty scale and make sure that it's zeroed. Sometimes my scale likes to be finicky. And then we'll start pouring in our yogurt, or our milk for our yogurt. Look at all that lovely fat. Okay, so we have our eight pounds of milk. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in our Instapot and plug it in. And I'm gonna hit our yogurt button. And that's what you want if you're incubating it, but we wanna boil ours first. So it says boil, and I've done this two different ways. You can leave the lid off and let it boil, or you can throw the lid on and then come back and check it. So I'm actually gonna throw the lid on and just let it sit, and I'll keep coming back and checking the temperature. Um, I want it to get up to between 165 and just below 180 are my target ranges for our taste. I don't want it go above 180, although some recipes may require you to do so. So I'm gonna throw the lid on this and let it go. Hey guys, while this is boiling, I'm going on to our next step. So I need another cup of milk. And to this, I'm gonna add our gelatin to let it bloom. So I have our little gelatin packets here, um, and I'm gonna do three and a half packets. I need to just throw it in there, and I let it sit for a while, and then I'll come give it a stir a little bit later, but I want it to kind of bloom on its own. Um, I think it just works that way better for me. So you can do it how you want to. And the half doesn't have to be an exact science. I just pour a little bit until I feel like it's about half gone. So we're just gonna let that set and let our milk boil and we'll be back in a minute. So this has been going for a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and see what temperature we are. So when you open your Instapot with the yogurt, you'll notice that there's a film on the top of it. I don't like this film, so I like to scrape it off. And then I'm gonna swirl my thermometer. And we're right about 155. So I'm gonna let it go for probably about 10 more minutes and then I'll recheck it again. 
So it's been about 45 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and skin the milk and check the temperature one more time. You can let the Instapot go um, and it will be um, when it's done boiling and that's usually right around 180 for me. So I usually stop it before then. So we're at 167, 168, which is perfect. I have my gelatin here. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a stir and then I'm gonna mix it in to my milk. So once it's good and mixed, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pop out your Instapot and stick it into cold water. I don't have a stopper in my sink, so I have to use a basin, but if you can, you can totally use your sink. Um, and now I'm gonna cool it down. So we wanna cool this down to less than 110 degrees to add our yogurt so it doesn't kill our yogurt culture. So I'm just gonna keep whisking it and getting it to cool down. So we've had to change our water out about three times. Um, but we're sitting now right about 100 degrees. So I am going to go ahead and call that good. I always pull my Instapot back out onto a um, washcloth or a kitchen towel and kind of dry it off a little bit. And now I'm gonna add my yogurt. So you can get yogurt cultures and use this. I really like this, I think it's easy. Um, so it works well for us. I'm doing about four heaping tablespoons, which the last time it ended up being pretty much the whole container. So if you're that close to it, I don't like things to go to waste, so I'm just gonna use the whole thing. And then you're gonna wanna whisk that in. And once it looks like it's good and mixed, which doesn't take too long, you can put your Instapot container back in your pot and now I'm gonna push the yogurt button and get it back to that eight hours and I'm gonna leave it alone so I can go enjoy the rest of my day and my Instapot is going to do the work for me all right guys it's been eight hours and our Instapot tells us that the yogurt is ready that's what you're waiting for um, so it means it's incubated it long enough um, to turn our goat milk into yogurt um, so when you open this up, you might see that it is um, a little bit chunky and that's okay. Um, that just has a little bit more cultures in some places than others. So I like to give it a really good stir and just kind of mix all that up, break it up. That's where this um, stirring apparatus comes in handy because you can kind of break stuff up a little bit more. It will thicken in the fridge. Um, it does have that lovely gelatin in it. Both Mark and I like vanilla, so I'm going to add some vanilla bean paste to it. Um, I usually just kind of eyeball this, and I add enough that you can see all those vanilla bean specks in it, um, but it's really just a taste. Um, if you don't have vanilla bean paste, uh, maple syrup and honey both work really well too. We've done that. Um, and then I usually fill our containers about two-thirds of the way full. Um, I stick our... Um, canning jar um, filler over the top of it and then I will just ladle the yogurt into it until it's about two-thirds of the way full. Um, we leave a little bit of space at the top because we do use it for overnight oats um, or it allows room um, to add fruit to it. Um, so then we'll just stick that in the fridge and it'll be ready by morning. So I'm getting ready to make my yogurt um, for the morning. Um, I worked all day today, um, but it is my favorite treat at work. And I just wanted to show you guys how good this batch came out. Um, it's super thick and creamy, just the way Mark and I like it. Um, I added cherries to it this morning and oatmeal, and it was really good. So try our yogurt, um, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your Instapot goat yogurt.